he also he also quoted or he also would say there is only one life that life is god's life that life is perfect that life is my life now and both of those quotes for me encapsulate the first two steps of affirmative prayer the recognition step, recognizing that there is an infinite intelligence that is everywhere present. And then step number two is that I am one with it. You are one with it. We are one with it. So when we hear, when we, when we talk about there is a power in the universe for good greater than we are, that's step one. And that last line, I can use it, we can use it, that's step two. Because in order for us to use it, I must be one with it. So this month, Deborah, thank you so much for time for bringing us back in um, to remembering what the theme for the month is, and that is the soul's call. And I think for this week, it's it's leaning into the discomfort. <laughs> so my talk title for today is answering the soul's call can be uncomfortable. But here's the thing. So let me start it like this, right? In order for us to answer the call of the soul, we have to hear it. We have to hear it first. In order for us to answer anything, we have to hear it. And I don't know about you, but for me, you know, my soul has been calling me for a long, long, long time. And it, you know, it's been calling me ever since we got here. I believe that we all come here to the spiritual plane called earth to express what the soul is here to express. We just have to remember, because I believe that when we get here to this spiritual plane called Earth, we forget. And so the mission, if we choose to accept it, is to remember who we are. So to answer the soul's call, we have to hear it. Now, sometimes that calling could be a subtle knocking on the door of our heart, you know. Hello, hello, right? Sometimes, you know, it comes up as questions as there must be more to life than this. There mu is this it? There must be more. No matter how successful you may be in your life or no matter what accomplishments you may have uh, completed, sometimes there may be that little voice going, God, there must be more than to do this than what's going on on here. You know, sometimes it can show up as a nagging, uh, restless feeling. Again, that going back to there must be more, there must be more. And until we start to tune into it, we don't know that it's the soul that is calling us to be more. We don't get that there's something within us that is wanting to be expressed, something that's wanting to be birthed. You know, sometimes it... it it shows up in ways, man, sometimes if we're not, if we're not aware of it, if we're not heeding what that call is, if we're not even taking the time to find out or to ask the question, what is this? What, what is this that's calling me forth? That call will get louder and that knock will become louder and louder. And sometimes it may show up uh, in how the health begins to deteriorate. Sometimes that not answering the call will show up in relationships dissolving. See, because here's the thing. When the soul calls, when the soul really, really calls, and we have said yes to it, then there's nothing that's going to stop it. If we fail to listen to that voice, that voice will get louder and louder and louder. In my case, it got louder to the point where a 16 year marriage dissolved and it, it was, it was, it was hard. Uh, it was, it was gut riching. It was, it, it was soul shaking. <laughs> it was soul shaking. And, and that's a good thing. That soul shaking part was a good thing because I was being shaken awake because that relationship was keeping me from answering that call. So whichever way that call tends to, to work for you, whichever way that call begins to show up in your life, we must be wise enough to begin to answer the call. Now, we begin to answer the call by asking questions. We begin to asking questions like this, what is my purpose? 
Now, why am I here? Where am I going? And these are a really good question to, questions to ask because we were, are basically saying, in, in essence, okay, I'm ready for more. I am ready for more. You know, going back to that other, you know, there must be more to this than what I'm experiencing. Okay, well, then what is that more? What is my purpose for being here? You know, I have all of this good going on, you know, for, for people who have been great successes in business. And you, we've heard stories about people who have more money that they know how to, you know, to deal with more than they knew they'll ever use. And they're still unhappy because that soul, there's something else that is coming forth, you know. So those questions, why, what is my purpose for being here? Why am I here? And where am I going? So, you know, we, we have heard in, um, in, in, in the New Testament, in Matthew, let me, let me put, put this up here, um, it says, as we've heard or been taught, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. For whoever asks, receives, and whoever seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, the door is opened. That sounds good, right? That sounds like it's an easy thing to do, that all we have to do is ask and all that we have to do is seek and all that we have to do is, you know, is, is you know, to, to, to make ourselves available. But there's more to it than that, right? So the Gnostic gospel of St. Thomas puts it in a little different way. In the Gnostic gospel of St. Thomas, the second verse, it says, let him, Yeshua says, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished and he will rule over all. So we are hearing that voice. There must be more to life than this. Why am I here? What is my purpose? Where am I going? So let me start seeking, right? And so it's more than seeking you shall find. Yes, when you yes, we will find. But as the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas says, when we find, we will be troubled. Why will we be troubled? We are troubled because we find out that we really don't know what we are looking for. We think that we know what we we're looking for. See, what happens is that we have a pre preconceived idea of what we are seeking. We have a preconceived idea of that we know or we're trying to find or we, we have a preconceived idea, what am I looking for? And there could be something in our minds going, I'm looking for, for this. But we come to find out that that's not what, what we're looking for and we become troubled, we become discouraged, we become upset. Also what happens is we find that what we, what we find that we are looking for is different than what we thought. Hmm. And this can cause some disturbance. It's not what I thought I was looking for because the soul in its unlimited realm, in its, mm, mm, what's that? It, with, with that? With that infinite possibilities, that unlimited potentiality of the soul, what I think that I am looking for is so much more. What I think I am looking for is nothing compared to what the soul is calling us forth to experience and then to, to, to be expressed as. See, here it is. Another way, another thing that we are going to find why we are troubled in order for us to answer the call of the soul, in order for us to really answer the soul's call, we have to give up of ourselves. Uh-oh, we have to become nothing or no thing. In the Hebrew language, is the Ein Sof. I, A-I-N-S-O-F. And God is called Ein Sof, means no thing. So in order for us, going back to step number two, to become, with, to become one with God, we have to become nothing. Ooh, right? Now, if I become nothing, well, then who am I? Now, if that's not a troubling thought, I don't know what is. But in order for us to answer the call of the soul, 
We have to surrender what we think we are. We have to let go of, of our preconceived ideas of who I am. I thought I was Eugene Holden here to whatever it is, whatever I put behind that, it's, it doesn't even come close to what the soul within us is asking us and calling us forth, calling us to remember who we are and who we truly are. And this is a preconceived idea, but I'm, I'm going to say it regardless. Who we truly are, are, we are brilliant illuminations of pure spirit. Now, I can have a conception of what that means, but it's so much bigger than what these words can convey. We have to surrender in order for that call to be answered. I have to surrender who I think I am. I have to surrender what I think life is to be. And then when we surrender, then we are ushered into something that is greater than we can ever imagine. And boy, do we have an imagination as, um, as, 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 Einstein said, right? Imagination is more important than knowledge. Neville Goddard would put it this way. Your imagination is God within you. Because everything that we look upon has been imagined. Everything that has been created on the physical plane is created twice. Once in the mind and then on the, on the material realm, in the material field. Right. So we have to now become the nothing in order for the soul to come forth. Maybe the answer, maybe answering the soul's call is this. Maybe the answer is to become soul. Maybe the answer is to become spirit. See, we don't have a soul. We don't have a spirit. We are soul. We are spirit. We are God made manifest. Everywhere we go, we are God in action within us. Every breath that we take, it is God in action within us. Every thought you think is God in action as that thought within you. So in order to, to answer the soul's call, we must become comfortable with the discomfort. We must become comfortable with the discomfort. We must be willing to, to let go of who we thought we were. We must surrender to the call of the soul. Surrendering to the call of the soul and entrusting, and entrusting that call, we know that we are guided and directed to experience the soul's highest and greatest good for ourselves simply because the, uh, the, the spirit's highest and greatest good for ourselves is ourselves. That God so loved the world that it turned upon itself, clothed itself, and then named itself you. We must surrender to the call of the soul, the call of spirit, the call to God. See, one of the definitions from the Hebrew language for the word repent, one of the definitions for that word repent is to turn around and face me. Spirit is saying to repent is to turn around and come back to me, right? So when, I'm, when we are answering the soul's call, we are saying in essence, I am ready to be more. I am ready to let go of who I am. I am ready to become no thing. I am ready to become nothing, nothing, nothing. And then we go back to scripture that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. So when, and the, the thing about seeking the kingdom of God, that is always, always an inside job. We're not gonna seek for the kingdom outside of us. It's not there, it is always within. So what does that call for? It calls for us to take time every day to get still, to go into a meditation without any agenda, to sit in the stillness, not trying to find out how to do the next deal, not, you know, not, not, you know, not trying to find out where I'm going to get this from or that from, which is not a bad thing to do. I'm not saying don't do that because 
visioning is a wonderful thing. How, what's God's highest vision for my life in this? And I'm not talking about, again, that's a very good thing. And what I want to say is to take the time to get still, to, to, to hold that, that sacred tryst with the divine within, just to be with God. And that takes surrender. And surrender, surrender takes trust. So learning to trust can be uncomfortable, right? <laughs> learning to trust can be uncomfortable because we live in a society, you know, that has inherent within it mistrust. Don't trust that person. Don't trust this person. That person's lighter than, than me, so let me not trust them. That person's darker than me, so not, let, me, let me not trust them. That person has more money than me. They can't be trusted. Oh, that person has no money at all. They can't be trusted. So this mistrust is inherently built into the, the systems of the society. Now, what we are to do is to rise above all of that, right? Uh, scripture says, I, if I am lifted up, shall, shall draw all others unto me. So what we are wanting to do in this trust is to lift ourselves up above all of that other materialistic stuff, right? So that we may become one with the soul's call and then become one with our brothers and sisters around the world. This can be uncomfortable because we have to, again, become nothing, and which means that we're gonna to have to unlearn what we've learned. We have to be re-educated because of re-educated from the miseducation that we may have experienced throughout the years. One way to become open and receptive and available to spirit, man, there are so many ways. And one of the ways that I want that come, that's coming to me right now is to let go of complaining. Now, Granted, we can look outside, you know, look to turn on the news. We can we hear stuff in the store that causes us to complain. But when we complain, we are setting up a block to hearing the call of the soul. When we are complaining, we are setting up a block to hear the call of the soul. So let's start there. Because attached to complaining is judgment. So let's just let things be. There is a power for good in the universe greater than we are. We can use it. But in order for us to use it wisely, in order for us to use it consciously for the co-creation of a world that works for all, we have to let go of everything that no longer serves answering that call. Complaining is one of the ways we are doing it. We are surrender. We are surrendering into the soul's call to us. We are surrendering to the soul's call to us to be bigger, brighter, bolder than we have ever been before. See, remember that you, we are here on purpose. You, me, we are all here on purpose. That purpose could be as simple as a smile smiling to the next person that comes to your physical, on your physical path, or maybe smiling to that person in your mental path, bringing somebody to mind and then smiling. Maybe your purpose is simply to be the presence of love. Lean into the discomfort. Lean into the discomfort. Answering the soul's call can be uncomfortable. But when we become comfortable with the discomfort, you can trust that you are guided and directed to experience more good, more love, more joy, more life, more grace, more peace, more and more and more. Scripture says, I am come so that they may have life and have, more, and have life more abundantly. Now, it doesn't say that I will come. It says I am come. It doesn't say I have come. It says I am come, right? Which means that we are talking about the I am, that Christ presence within each and every one of us, that God presence within you and me and all of us. Answering the call of the soul is surrendering 
to the God within. Let's pray. Oh, how so very good it is to speak this word from a place of gratitude. I am so very grateful because I choose to recognize first and foremost that there is this infinite intelligence from which all things are created. I recognize that it is at the very center of all of life from the green and the blade of the grass to the twinkling of the stars in the expansiveness of the galaxies. I recognize that there is only one thing happening here and that is the activity of spirit, is the activity of God living, moving and having its being in through and as all that there is for it is the very nature of the divine to permeate, to penetrate and to fill the interspaces of the universe, meaning that there is no space where God is not. The space between the inhale and the exhale is filled with the vibratory frequency of spirit. The space between the two hands, when they are spared out in front of us, that space between the palms are filled with God. The space between everything is filled with all that there is. And so I recognize that the fullness of God continues to, to to radiate in through and as everything that is seen and unseen, everything that is known and unknown, all there is is God. And so recognizing and acknowledging that God is everywhere present at all times, I know that at all times God is present right where I am. For there is no place I can go where God is not. And as I know this to be the truth of my life, I know this to be the truth of each individualized expression here on Zoom and in those who are listening to my voice right now, right where we are, God is. Right here, right now, God is, we are. How grateful I am to know this. And it's from this place of unity that I speak this word, knowing that we are unity by nature. I speak this word for the highest and best for each individual on the planet. See, I know that our desire and God's will are the same thing. Our desire is to live life mm, from a place of peace and in a place of peace. That is God's will for our life. Everybody's desire is to have more than enough food. That is God's will for our life. Everybody's desire is to love and to be loved. This is God's will for our lives. And so I speak this word into being, knowing that the word that I speak is the word of God, and the word of God is always made flesh, simply because the word is a law unto itself, and all it knows is its own fulfillment. And so knowing that this word is already filled, knowing that this treatment is being demonstrated right now, knowing that this is answered prayer, I give great thanks. And so it is from this place of gratitude that I now release my word into the beautiful and dynamic activity of love and of law. See, I know that as I release my word into the law, the law with unconditional love cannot help itself. It must return these words unto us completely and abundantly and joyfully fulfilled. And so fulfilled, we now allow it to be, declaring that it is so. And so it is. Amen. Take a breath. Peace and blessings.